then he retires. And so I'll be here this week and next week, and uh, you come the week after that is Music Sunday. So we're looking forward to that. Do we have any announcements this morning? Yellow River Festival is coming up June the 4th and 5th. And as you know, we like to have a presence at the festival. So we're selling apple dumplings and coffee. And we do need your help. So there is a sign-up sheet with different tasks to sign up for. So please help us help the missions group as well as our own church and sign up to work for the festival. Thank you. Any other announcements? Yes? Yes? Hey! Brother Blues Brothers! So old man. Come on down to Culver and, and, uh, and show Becky what you can do. Uh, and then, okay, well, I'll come out to the show. <laughs> and uh, thank you to, to all of you who, uh, who came on, on Thursday to the Max and Crack Singers performance. There are more than the posters on the back board. If you'd like to see one of the other ones in the area, we will be back in Plymouth uh, a week from. Tuesday, I think it is, uh, at First UCC, but I uh, hope to see uh, some more of you So, thank you. <coughs> oh, sorry, I didn't say the time. It's 7.30. And if you're in Central Time, it's 7.30 Eastern Time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anybody else got an announcement? Yes. Yes, I have three from the Youth and Education Committee. First one, and two of them are on the screen, and one of them, you're getting this way. Um, we do have information in the back about church camp, so if you are interested in going camp, um, in kids' camps and family camps, sign-up sheets are back there. The church um, is continuing to offer some financial assistance, paying part of the cost for um, people who want to go to camp. So if you want to sponsor a camper or you want to be a camper and see that, uh, contact Chris in the church office. Uh, you also saw on the screen information about Vacation Bible School that's coming up in June. We should have the sign-up sheets for that available for you next week. And we also are doing Summer Sunday School this year, a combined um, class for all the kids' classes so the kids can continue to have Sunday School during the summer and families can continue to attend. Parents will have be able to attend Sunday school in the summer. So we will have sign-ups for people who are interested in taking a Sunday to teach yeah. summer Sunday school. We'll have curriculum available for you um, that will not be difficult to implement. So people were really good about covering that last year, and so we hope to be able to do that again. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? We can't hear you unless you use your monitor. supposed to be doing this.
us near. Fill our minds with awe. The wisdom of God surprise us. Encourage us with hope. Glory of God shine through our lives. Reveal your power and your glory. In the mystery, the wisdom, the glory of God. Please join in singing, Come Christian, join to sing.
concerns by George?
us to participate in a mission of reconciliation throughout the world, inviting us to participate in the building up of the body of Christ, for justice and peace prevail. Let us give generously of our time, talents, and treasure to foster this mission. The offering plates passed first are for the regular church offerings. Donations in the Ricker basket will be used by the Youth and Education Committee. Will the ushers wait a
the book of Revelation, which also coincidentally happens to be the last passages in the Bible. The title of this section is called The Coming of Jesus. And if you hadn't figured it out, and I was very impressed, you got that in the anthem. Come. There's a theme here about coming. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I'm Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may go through the gates into the city. <laughs> I, Jesus, have sent my angels to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the road to the offspring of David, and the bright morning star. The Spirit and the Bride says, Come. And let the one who hears say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty, Come. And let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. May God his blessings to this the reading of his holy word. Let us pray. In the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto thee, O God, our rock and our salvation. Amen. As long as I can remember the uh, four Sundays before uh, Christmas, the churches I attended are served, lit, and then candles. And it was my practice that as uh, the people would come down to light the candles, we would sing the first verse of Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. And then after the candles were lit and as they were returning to the seats, we would sing the second verse of Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. For 40 years, though, I had this ongoing discussion with the members of the church. While I was having them sing, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, they were all wanting to sing, Oh, come, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Just when do you start singing Christmas carols? and hymns during Advent. They taught me at uh, seminary to wait to the bloody end all singing to Christmas. Some churches I can get them to hold out to the fourth Sunday, but most we compromised on the third. People wanted to get on to sing the Christmas song. But I suspect there may have been a deeper longing that the, what the people in the congregation really wanted was Jesus to come. They were tired of the time of waiting, and they wanted Jesus to arrive. When Jesus came the first time, the Jews were under the persecution of the Romans. For some time they had been waiting for the Messiah to return for David's kinship to come and set them free from the Roman rule. And they had this longing for the coming of the Messiah. When the book of Revelation was written, People were under persecution. Christians were being crucified and killed. 
There didn't seem to be any hope for possibilities. And they wanted Jesus to come. To return. And bring in the new kingdom. The new Jerusalem. The new order. People are waiting in expectation today for Jesus to come. In the years I've been in ministry, there have been all kinds of books written, prophecies given, persons reading the signs of the time, waiting for Jesus to come a second time. But on a deeper level, People are longing to come into their own lives. People are waiting for him to come to walk with them and to talk with them and speak their names. And give them the assurance that they walk not alone. But in this world there is hope and impossibility. Today's Mother's Day, if you haven't figured that out. Thank you, Ed. And it's, well, you're over here. You're over there. You've moved on me. Family gatherings, phone calls, cards, acts of kindness, all good things to honor mothers today. But as we come to this Mother's Day, I'm reminded of the mothers who are under the oppression of the new Roman Empire, ISIS. Television has these horrific stories about their husbands being killed. Sons being taken off, children sold into slavery, whole towns just literally destroyed and cultures wiped out. And we have the mothers weeping for their children and their families and their people. Mothers in our own community who this Mother's Day are in distress. Remember last fall there was the shooting of the killing of the out in the motels. Good Samaritan Sunday school class trying to figure out what to do about that and had a Halloween party and began to learn about the subculture of generational situational poverty. And the strain and pressure that mothers in our midst are going through. <clears throat> Dealing with substance abuse, alcoholism, domestic violence, moving from place to place, no place to fall on. There's mothers in our midst as we see them that today go through this distress. But the mothers of our own congregation, I don't know about you, we reflect that uh, in some ways we're glad we're not having to raise children today. Because the pressure my kids are under. Don't seem to be nearly as bad as what my kids experienced or what I experienced. All kinds of temptations and opportunities and mothers feel under pressure what to do. Economic pressures, health issues.
intentions, the mothers of our congregation, the women of this church. I wonder how often in the darkness of your secret space wish for Jesus to come. Pray that he would be with you as you experience the pressures of your life. Scripture text takes a little twist at the end. Instead of talking about Jesus coming, he talks about us coming. And it says, Come, you who are thirsty, and I will give you. When I read that, I was reminded of uh, the story in John. Jesus and the disciples are traveling through Samaria. The disciples have gone off, and Jesus sitting by this well. It's about noon, he's thirsty, this woman comes out from town. I don't wonder why she's coming out at noon. All the women came out much earlier to draw water. Evidently, the woman is an outcast. Jesus says, can I get something to drink? And she says, what do you, a Jew, have to do with the Samaritan? So she's double cursed. She's a Samaritan. And then he asks, where is her husband? And she says, don't have one since you're correct. You've got five husbands. And the woman you're living with, the man you're living with, is not your husband. And then he says, I have something to give you. You drink of this water, which is here and gone today, and I will give you living water, which will sustain you in the life here, and will sustain you in the life And she asked for the water. And her life is transformed. And we can see her coming out with a weary heart to the well. And she we goes back to the village rejoicing and glad because Jesus has come to her. In the midst of her distress, and has given her the living water, which makes all the difference. Jesus comes this morning, and he invites us to come. If you are thirsty, Give you water which will bring life. Well, now and forevermore. Jesus invites you to come if you are weary and heavy laden, and life is getting you down.
If you're overwhelmed with guilt and shame, Jesus will come. And give you forgiveness. If you're walking through the dark days of life, God, our Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks that Jesus came, will come again, but more especially we give you thanks that he comes today. Our Father, we pray that as we come out of the depth of our despair, hopelessness, frustration, pain, sorrow, that we might come to Him. Our Father, we pray that You help us to trust and believe that each of us might have light and life. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We have one last come song. It's not in the title, but it's in the first First, it's remind us that we're all looking forward to going to that heavenly kingdom, and uh, one day we will share that. And so we're going to come, Christians, so we, we're going to sing. We're marching to Zion. If anybody feels impelled to get up and march around the church, that's perfectly permissible. You can march around the choir hall. Let's all stand and sing this wonderful hymn. We're marching to Zion.
Christ that God Jesus has come and has been with us this morning. We give thanks that in this coming week, as we go through our times of distress, Jesus will come. And may each of us come to Him that we might have life. 